sequence and does not see a sufficient flame signal at the end of that sequence. This can be caused due to no spark, uh, potentially no gas, blocked airflow, a uh, bad flame rod or possibly a bad controller. Uh, we'll tackle these one at a time and we'll have other videos that will go into detail troubleshooting each of these components when they fail one at a time. It's easiest to start by checking the igniter. So to do that we're just going to remove the two screws that secure it. You're going to leave the ground wire and the igniter wire hooked up. And once you get the igniter out, verify first that you've got a good gap. This should be 3 16 to 1 quarter of an inch. You can see these electrodes are lined up nicely in the horizontal axis. You also want to make sure that there's no cracks or pinholes. They'll show up dark pinhole spots on this uh, ceramic portion. If you see any of those things, or if this is badly deformed, you're best to replace the igniter now, rather than carrying forward. Once you've examined the igniter and determined that it's acceptable or you've potentially replaced it, uh, at that point you also want to make sure that the cable is in good condition. Just look for any signs of cracking or arcing through the cable anywhere. This one looks to be good. So to do the next step, we're going to hang the igniter to one side, turn the boiler back on, and we're going to watch this go through an ignition sequence. Uh, when the boiler goes through the sequence, you should see a bright, strong spark across the electrode. You should hear it. And, of course, it should occur at the tip where the electrodes come together. For the next step, we are leaving the gas off. We're going to turn the boiler back on. Once it boots up, if need be, we'll reset the lockout or let it go through an ignition sequence and keep an eye on this gap. Now that our boiler is turned back on, it's gone into a de-air sequence. We're going to bypass that by pressing and holding OK. At this point, the boiler does have a call for heat. You can do this with either a call for heat or hot water. And we're going to watch for a good, strong spark. You should also be able to hear this in addition to seeing it very brightly. Note the time the spark runs for is 5 to 7 seconds. If yours is running significantly shorter than this, uh, or longer, then there may be a problem with the boiler control. However, this is a normal spark, and this is what you should expect to see. Now that you've verified you have a good spark, you're next going to want to again make sure the gas is off, and we're going to check our gas pressure uh, on the line pressure test port, which is this bottom port on the valve here. You're going to loosen the screw two to three turns, install your manometer, and then check gas pressure. that off, turn on a manometer and ensure it's zeroed out, and then we're going to put that on. And the first thing we want to check is to see that we have ad adequate gas pressure when the unit is static, so we'll turn on our gas. If we're on natural gas, we expect to see between 4 to 9 inches water column. If this is propane, we would expect to see between 10 and 12 inches water column. Now that we're sure we've got good static gas pressure, turn the appliance on, leave your manometer hooked up. We're going to let it try for an ignition sequence, and you're going to look for a dip or a change in the gas pressure, which indicates that the valve is open. If you don't have sufficient gas pressure when the unit is not running, check your gas supply to the boiler, there's something wrong. If your gas pressure is sufficient but it drops below the minimum, which is 4 inches for natural or 10 inches for propane, then again you should check your gas supply. There may be an issue where there's a blockage in the line or a regulator that's faulty. see we got a drop in pressure. This is a reasonable amount of drop. And also watch the length of time this stays down for. Again, it should be between 5 to 7 seconds, very similar to the amount of time that the igniter sparks for. In this case, our burner has lit. 
This is a good time to observe your flame signal by going to menu 107. If you have a very low flame signal, it would indicate that potentially your boiler's combustion is not set properly and you'll want to do a combustion test. I recommend leaving the manometer hooked up until you're done with your testing for the day. Uh, this would be after the combustion test is complete and your boiler's running. The next step, if your boiler still was not igniting or was igniting poorly, would be to remove the intake from inside the cabinet by loosening these two 5 16 clamps. Thoroughly inspect this intake pipe to make sure there's nothing that doesn't belong there in here. If it's filled with water, or a significant amount of dust or debris, you may have a problem with the intake location. Also verify that inside the Venturi is both clean and clear, if need be. Take your cell phone, take a photo inside the Venturi. You should be able to see clear all the way through into the blower. Once you've verified that all this is good, temporarily reinstall the intake, drawing air from inside the room. This ensures that the boiler has adequate combustion air. If it's going to light, this makes it the most likely circumstance for that to happen. Again, observe your gas pressure, and hopefully at this point your boiler will light and run. If it does, it would indicate you maybe have a blocked intake or exhaust.